What's up guys? Welcome to part four of my Revit to 3ds Max workflow. This one is all about plants. This is one of my favorite topics because this is really the first time that you actually get to see your design in some actual context. It also softens up the image and it doesn't look like the digitally produced hard line image that it actually sort of is. To follow along with this video, you're gonna need a few things. Number one is plants. I'm gonna be using models from Evermotion, specifically Arc Models 126 and 171. These are high quality, they're well organized, but you do have to pay for them, they're about 100 bucks. To me, that's worth it. There are all sorts of places that you can get models, some of which are free, that's entirely up to you. This is what I'll be using. The second thing you wanna check out is Connector by Design Connected. This is a free digital asset manager, which essentially is how I manage my 3D library. It's free, go take a look at that because I'll be using that in this workflow. The third thing you wanna check out is Forest Pack. Forest Pack is an incredibly powerful scattering tool for 3ds Max. It comes with a whole bunch of presets so that you can just super quickly get lawns or gravel planters laid out. And then you can also scatter your own objects to do whatever you want. Background trees, foreground bushes, you name it. I'm gonna be using the pro version, which is a paid one, but there's also a light version, which is free, which should be good enough for you to just go download and test out and see if this is something that actually works for you. If you have those three things, you should be good to go. I'm gonna teach you how we import plants, how you use those lawn presets that I mentioned with Forest Pack, then how you use Forest Pack to scatter any way that you want. Links below are gonna jump you to those three topics. Hit me up if you have any questions on anything. Otherwise, let's get into it. All right. So this program is Connector. This is essentially a beefed up version of your file explorer designed for managing 3D models. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be using Evermotion's Arc Models 171 and 126. These are essentially small little bushes and some larger trees. What I like about these models is that they're all high quality and they come already organized. One of the big draws for using Connector is that when you download things from the internet, your textures are gonna be all over the place. This program actually lets you manage that within it rather than having to individually find your materials within Max. Any file, you can just click it and go down to Manage Files and it'll give you a list of all of your different materials and where they're at. If you need to point your textures somewhere else, which you most likely will if you're downloading anything off the internet, it's very easy just to select everything in bulk and point to somewhere else. What's also nice is that you can specify rendered previews or you can just get an actual preview of what the 3D model looks like, which you can't do just in your typical file explorer. When I'm ready to add something to the scene, all I do is I just go down, find the file and just drag it into the max window. It's gonna give me an option here. Pretty much all the time I'm gonna merge as a proxy. It's gonna bring up this little interface this is essentially pointing where do you want to save your proxy. All right, proxies are essentially placeholders for high poly models that only get pulled into your model at render time. The point of this is so that you can take these 100 megabyte trees and rather than pulling tons of them into your scene and getting it bogged down up to five gigabytes or so, you can leave them outside of the file so when you hit save, you're not resaving all of this extra geometry, you're only saving your scene. It's a way to just keep your scene much lighter than working with a ton of high poly stuff all the time. What we're gonna see in our scene are these representations of it as a point cloud. So this dialog box is like how we want to bring the model in. You really don't need to worry about these settings. The default ones are fine. Just focus on where do you want to save that model. It's sometimes good practice just to make a folder right next to your scene file that's called proxy and that's where it's going to dump into. Hit OK and it will create that proxy and pull it in for you. So that guy came in at a scale but that's okay. Trees are probably the one thing that I don't care as much about scale because trees vary so much. Scale that down. So just to show you how proxies work, over here we have this viewport display and it's saying point cloud. If you change that to full mesh, it's going to update and you'll see the tree that came in. Let's keep it on point cloud because it's gonna get a little crazy once we get too many things in. Let's also quickly double check our materials and make sure that everything came in okay. Use the eyedropper. And it looks like all of our bitmaps are loading, which means that they have the file paths in correctly. So 
that's it. We have a tree. You can now move that however you want based on your scene. Scale, rotate, whatever. A cool little trick as well, if you're in your move tool, if you hold shift while moving, it will make a copy. When it comes up with the copy options, copying means that it will be a completely unique version of that tree. An instance is linked to that original, so if you edit the original, it'll propagate those changes to the new tree. Instances are typically a little more efficient for the scene, so I'm gonna do instance for now since I won't really be changing these individually. And let's do a quick test render and see what happened. And it looks like we have some trees. So it's that easy to make trees. You can do the same thing with bushes, tall trees, small trees, whatever you want. Bring in as many plants as you want. It's really up to you then to make whatever scene matches the context that you're designing it. Now I want to use some of the presets with Forest Pack to show you how I make ground cover like lawns or gravel. If you've set your model up like I do in Revit, you should have these surfaces that are all ready to be scattered on. They are single pieces of geometry that have just a single flat plane, no depth to them. These are ideal for working with Forest Pack. When you're ready to scatter on it, all you do is you click on your Forest Pack icon. Over here, you want to have the Generate icon set. Let's call this one Gravel. Let's go to the library. Within this library, you're gonna have a whole bunch of presets here. The forest library is what comes with Forest Pack Pro by default. And within that, you have a whole bunch of options of 3D and 2D things that you can scatter. Flowers, individual plants, stones. What's really cool about it though are the presets. And within these, you have a whole bunch of different presets of gravel or lawns meadows, you have mulch. I mean, it's pretty cool that it comes with all these built in because all you have to do is find one you like, select it, and click import selected. Then you just click on whatever surface that you want. It'll bring up a couple dialog boxes. I would say yes for all of these. I think by default they work totally fine. All of these are just about adjusting your scale and boom, now you have gravel that easy. Let's do another one for the uh, for the grass out here. Let's call this one grass. Go to select, find a lawn. Let's do this guy. Let me just select. And there you go. Let's go take a look. And there you go. We're already getting somewhere that looks a whole lot better than what we had previously. Those are a couple tools that you can use with Forest Pack to quickly get some ground cover that'll be a little bit more rich than what you'll get with just a 2D texture. Hopefully that's been pretty easy to follow so far. The last thing that I want to show you is how to build your own templates so you can scatter your own geometry and build your own forests or meadows or whatever you want. Let's bring in a few more plants from Connector. Let's just pick a few things. I don't know, let's grab this guy. So now we have a few different plants. So now what we want to do when we click our forest pack icon, instead of clicking generate, let's do custom edit. Hit OK. And you'll get this little F icon. Let's go over under your edit modifier panel. By default, it's going to start with your whole grass preset. Let's delete all that. So there are a few steps to setting this up. The first thing you want to do is select the geometry that you want to scatter. To do that, you just click the plus icon, and that creates a new item. Then you want to select custom object. Clicking this none will let you pick anything in the scene that you want. So let's pick our bush after we finish auto-saving. Now you can see it's slotted in here, and we have something here. Let's, let's do another one. Let's give it a unique color so we can tell them apart. 
So now that we've selected the geometry, we want to select a surface that we want to scatter these on. Let's close this rollout and select surfaces. Similarly, you'll click the plus icon and now you can pick anything in your scene that you want to scatter on. So let's pick this surface that we had over here. Hopefully nothing should have happened yet because we haven't turned this surface on yet, which we'll do in just a second. Let's close that and now let's go to areas. By default, you'll now have this surface area up here, but it won't be turned on. If you turn on, you'll see we've now scattered all of those across everything. You do have a couple options to paint and add splines to add plants just to certain areas, but we'll touch on those in a few minutes. Right now, you clearly just have plants indiscriminately added everywhere. If we scroll down to distribution, this is gonna be how it's scattering all those plants across the surface. Right now it's set to image, and the image we have selected is full. Let's change that to horizontal band. Now you can see that we have this image and the plants are being scattered based on that image. We have a density. That density is essentially saying that this is a 19 foot image, so every 19 feet we're going to have that pattern repeating. If we increase that, we've now said that it's going to repeat every 64 feet. Play around with this image and this density because just with this you can get a ton of variation in how your plants scatter around. Let's close that and jump down to the transform tab. Within here, this is what's going to control how your objects rotate, how they scale, and how they move around a bit. If you turn off this rotation and the scale, this means everything is going to be the exact same size as that base geometry that we originally started with. If we turn on the scale, that means everything will scale between 75% and 125% of what the original one was. So you can play with that to really quickly get a whole lot of variation amongst all your geometry. Another important one to use is your rotation. Specifying your Z from 0 to 359 means that across the entire surface, all of your plants had the option to spin around essentially 360 degrees. That means from any view, you're really not going to see the same angle repeat itself over and over. Between rotation and scale, you pretty much have all the tools you need to not have any plant tiling occur. Meaning you can use one or two plants and you'll never be able to pick up on the same plant appearing more than once. Now that we've set this up, you can go back to ge your geometry tab and you can disable plants. You can turn them on, you can delete them. And essentially, you're going to be able to parametrically control how all of your plants are scattered around based on all the parameters that you've already set up. A cool little trick that you can also do is if you go to your area tab, right now we had it indiscriminately scattering across the entire surface. If you turn that off, one of my favorite ways to use this is you can click on this little guy, which is a brushed area. And you can say, rather than just scattering across everything, I want it only to appear on the areas that I brush it on. So you can click this button to turn on the brush, click this for brush settings, and let's say 10 feet. I now have a brush of 10 feet that I can paint my plants around with. And of course, all the distribution settings apply, so I can go down and I can make that much denser. So if we jump back into our camera, I can start to see that that's filling in the back side of the rendering. So now of course we can do the same thing with our trees, if we wanted to get more trees in the background. Let's try that.
So with those three tools, you can pretty much do any type of background tree, foreground bushes, ground cover, individual specimen trees. It's really up to you to use your available plant library to compose whatever image that is convincing and tricks the viewer into thinking that this is a real building in a real site. Forest Pack has a whole lot of other options available with it that if you're interested, there's tutorials available you can go and check out. But for an architect who's just looking for something better than what Revit can handle, these are pretty much all the tools that you really need to learn. At this point, the main thing that we don't have is the interior lights, beds, tables, sort of all that soft stuff that really drives home the point that this is a livable place that you want to experience. I'm going to be covering that stuff in the next video before the last video, which is a post-production video in Photoshop. Subscribe to find out when that one's available. I'm also active on Instagram, so hit me up if you have any questions because I totally want to help out. Hope you had fun with this one and thank you so much for watching.